Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> man, I'm back, man. Call it a reboot. Call it a relaunch. Call it whatever you want. Just make sure you call it For the Love of the Game, Episode 7. So I've been in my A for about two months, man. Just some, some things going on. I was going to take a break, try to work something with the channel. But the NBA season started, and I just felt like I just want to have a place to be able to a platform. I want to have a platform be able to put out what I want to say. I, you know, I always got stuff to say, man. So the NBA season is three days old. And I think we got a nice little bit to talk about. I think so. Um, so here we go, man. For the love of the game, episode seven, I'm back. I want to drop some things real quick. I don't know when I'll be dropping, man. I'm still trying to figure some things out. But I know that I will try to get a video, just overviews or what I'm thinking about, what what I think about the NBA right now. Just, you know, give my input. Y'all know what I do, man. Just out here talking that talk, giving them bold takes. On this show, we speak only facts. That's all I ever do. We keep it a hundo on here. So, <coughs> excuse me. All right, so first things first, man. Y'all know where we finna go. We finna go to Battle LA. You know, the Clippers and the Lakers. To me, this is a rivalry. I want to say that. The media has made it a rivalry. Um, it's the Clippers versus Lakers. The Lakers have always been the top team in L.A., but the Clippers are definitely getting up there considering they picked up Kawhi, PG. They got some nice additions. So this is one thing I want to say about that game. I, don't, I mean, y'all watched it, but I think LeBron was not aggressive enough. But for another reason other than the game, I just think... LeBron has been in the league for 17 years, man. He's seen this before. I think that that home, not home opener, that season opener for him, it was just kind of like, okay, you know, let's not put all our eggs into this basket about this being such a big game, such an important game. Then if they lose their game, they're all, you know, down. The morale's down in the locker room. It's like, man, we just lost to our rival, the Clippers. You know, they came out, beat us opening night. I definitely think LeBron downplayed it a little bit to his guys and his and just the teammate, just everybody, because that's LeBron James. He's been in the league for 17 years. He's seen this before. So I don't think that game was as important for the Lakers as it was the Clippers, because what the Clippers wanted to do was come out, put their foot down and say, like, you know, hey, we here, you know, like, we in L.A., you're going to have to respect us now. And that's what they wanted to do. So they came out, played with a chip. You know, Pat Bev always has a chip. Lou Will, Montrez. And the most important thing we all seen, they did it without PG. I like them better without PG. Y'all heard me say, I don't like the Kawhi and PG duo. It's not a duo to me. That's They play the exact same way, the exact same position. So with PG off the floor, I still like the lineup they had. I like how they always kept Kawhi or Lou Will um, on the floor. Because they can carry the score, and you just need a little bit of help here and there. Let Shaman hit a three. Montrez roll, get a dunk. You know, Patrick Patterson. All those guys helping in, chipping in. But Kawhi had 30. And another thing I want to say, though, this is what I would say. I, what I, I wish LeBron would have gave the people what they wanted, though. Built this up as a rivalry. And to me, man... When people are already saying Kawhi's the best player in the league, so if Kawhi's already taking your throne, you know, LeBron being the best player in the league, I think LeBron should have came out a little more aggressive, a little more assertive, and really just kind of like, I think when Kawhi hit seven straight jump shots, when he made seven straight field goals, I should say, I think LeBron, that should have been the thing that's like, hey, coach, I got him. You know, this is game one of a new season, man. You didn't make the playoffs last year, you know, due to various reasons, but you didn't make the playoffs last year. Kawhi just came off a championship. All this noise is around Kawhi. You need to establish yourself early as still the best player. I think he should have got on Kawhi. I just made some noise. I feel like he was kind of dodging him. Kawhi was on him. Kawhi was guarding him. So I like that there. But I just think, you know, they should have had the people what they wanted. Now, in the Christmas game, I think the Christmas game will have a little bit more. It'll have a little bit more effect. They'll be playing. By Christmas, you should get a feel of your team, how good you are. You should be beating teams you're supposed to be beating. I mean, I, that was a season opener, you know. So I'm with LeBron. I wasn't really tripping. Everybody went in. He was playing two passes. He was doing this. But that's a season opener for a guy who's played 17 years in the NBA. He's he's okay. <laughs> he's all right. So 
shout out to Kawhi though. Kawhi really is making a name for himself. And the one thing I like about Kawhi is he's just about his business, man. I always said I like that, man. He just comes to the gym. He don't have no social media. Every time he do something, he get made fun of, but he's on social media, so he don't even care to be on there. So, shout out Kawhi, though, and shout out the, the Clippers. Um, I don't even know who my favorite team out of those two are. I don't even care, because y'all know my favorite team, man. About to get on them now, the Golden State Warriors. I know, I know, but it's okay. <clears throat> this is what I want to say. I don't think it's panic time. Charles Barkley saying after one half of basketball that the Warriors will not make the playoffs this year. It was one half. It was the first half of the game. Um, Pat Bev making comments talking about it's a little different without KD now, huh? Like, the only problem I have with those is that, first of all, it's Charles, Charles Barkley's comment. Um, he made that comment against quote unquote or or maybe I should say quote unquote maybe the best team in the NBA now. They just became real stacked. Uh one of the best defensive teams that are gonna be in the league. So you're taking a hurt, banged up warrior squad versus the best team in the NBA, maybe, and the best defensive team, you know, maybe. That I mean, come on man. Golden State knew what they were gonna they knew they were banged up. They're gonna come out there, they were gonna fight, they was gonna play. And Pat Bev, um I think the K without KD, okay, but if Clay was there still, I think it's a little different game if Clay was still there. Um, the Clippers could still have won for sure, but I don't think it would have been a 19 point game. I don't think the game would have got as ugly as it did throughout the game. Um, not that they just had a full healthy squad. And this one, I'm gonna tell you, man, this year, this year, the Warriors are probably out of winning championship, they're probably not gonna be there, probably not. Next year, I think if they can, it depends how they play. I think the Warriors might go, it depends if they're trying to go passive and go rebuild mode, which is letting Steph and Draymond and Clay kind of mentor these younger players because they've already been there for the run. Um, you know, Steph and all them have already been there for the playoff runs and all that. So I could see them doing that. I think they should go, we got one more ring in us mode. Let's go chase it. So if they do it that way, and they go pick up one more star, a forward, potential, not potential, I'm going to say probably a guy who can score the ball. They need to score. Pick up a guy who can score the ball. I think the Warriors still have another championship in them. I definitely do. Um, out of the games that I've, that I've caught so far, because like I said, the NBA have been in for about three days. The ones that i caught so far, uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing in the NBA, man. Like I said, the talent is bounced around, man. There's so much. I was telling somebody the other day that, like, every night there's a good game to watch. You feel me? Because, like, just every night this team will be playing and they got one or two stars. Or this team could play and they got that one player. But he's like, yeah, I could watch him. You know, like the Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets are a good team, but you tune in because Kyrie's on the night. You know, let's watch him. So, one team I'm really kind of liking are the Pelicans. You know, they don't have Zion, but they're a young squad. I've watched them play twice now. I just, they lost. The only problem right now is they can't close out games. Had a good game with Toronto. Just couldn't close it out. They just lost to Dallas. They just couldn't close that out, man. Just a young team. Um, and they're not able to close out games yet. And that's okay. They're probably one of the youngest teams in the NBA. I think they'll be fine. I really want to take a hot take, say they could be a seed. I'm not going to do that. Next year, they could probably maybe be a seed. Probably and maybe. No guarantees on that, man. And the last thing I want to touch on is I want to get an award, I think, out the way now, which is most improved player. There's three people I'm looking at for most improved. Fred Van Fleet, because, you know, he's in the starting role now. So he had a big role last year, but now he has a bigger role. I think he dropped like 31 opening night. Pascal, I, I don't Think there's not a rule, but if you can go back to back, he might be the guy to go back. But he went 34. He had 34 before getting fouled out. He's in a bigger role now with Kawhi being gone. He's their first option. And third, um, D'Angelo Russell, for the same reason as Fred, where he's just in a, a more, he's in a better environment. He has more minutes. More minutes leads to more production. I watched D'Lo last night, and I, I like what I've seen from him. When he gets comfortable, he gets to feel the one thing about Golden State is they play free. They want you to run up and down and shoot the ball and just be free with your game. So 
I think D'Lo coming off a career season, coming into this place where they want to win, you know, just don't think because Clay and, and, and KD, because Clay's not there and KD's hurt, they're trying to tank or anything. They know they're not going to have a great season, but the goal is still to go out there and win games. And I think D'Lo can help contribute that to this team. And I think that this is the best year in sports. 2019 is the best year in sports. In football, basketball, college football. I don't know about college basketball yet, but I think we are in for the greatest year of sports yet. You can just, so much stuff is going around, man. So I had to get back on here and just get my little spiel, man, for episode seven. So I'm going to go back to dropping consistently. Um, I need to figure out some days. I will let y'all know that, though. But I just want to appreciate y'all for hopping back in with me, tuning back in. Let's take this NBA journey together. And that's it for For the Love of the Game, Episode 7.